Good morning and welcome to the Forex Daily Update, brought to you by Pepperstone on Tuesday the 2nd of April 2019. I'm Darren Sinden and you can follow me throughout the day on Twitter by using at DS underscore Pepperstone. Okay, let's kick off with a look at the overnight changes and price moves to be aware of. Relatively quiet, I think is how we describe uh, the price section yesterday's uh, uh, markets. Uh, one or two uh, key points though to flag still. Uh, the British pound slipping by 0.25% uh, against the US dollar, trading with a 130.66 handle shortly before uh, we recorded the video. And we'll come to the reasons behind that for we, uh, a little later on in the video. Uh, in Australasia, uh, we saw the Kiwi and the Australian dollar both down by around 0.4% against the US dollar over the last 24 hours. And again, we'll look at some of the reasons behind that momentarily. The Brazilian real is moving in the other direction, though. Solid gains from the Brazilian currency against the uh, greenback. Uh, the real adding 1.38% to the good against the US currency. Uh, dollar index for its part trading up, up by around 0.12%. Um, but uh, no great shakes there, really. Although I suppose we should take a look at the weekly and monthly changes uh, in the trade weighted dollar, where it is much more firmly on the front foot. Uh, and before we go, something we haven't seen for a while, solid gains uh, from some of the cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin up by 13.81% yesterday and Ether adding 7.25%. Uh, and the weekly and monthly gains are stacking up there as well. So perhaps there's a bit more interest in uh, those markets which have been fairly quiet of late. OK, what's on the calendar then? Events that may move the markets today. Well, we've already had uh, Australian building permits data out at uh, 12.30 uh, last night, uh, a mixed bag, but it's safe to say that the 19.1% growth in the month on month building permits was a welcome relief uh, from uh, for the construction industry that's been in the doldrums, I think it's fair to say. But overshadowing uh, that good news from Australia was the RBA interest rate meeting uh, and statement, and we'll look at that uh, shortly in uh, the video. To come at 06.30 GMT, we'll have consumer price index data out of Switzerland for the month of March. Uh, that will be followed at 7am GMT by the first of the day's central banker speech, or in fact the only central banker speech today in fairness, uh, this from the ECB's Peter Prie. Then at 8.30 GMT, we're in the UK for market construction PMI for the month of March. At 9am, we're back in mainland Europe for Eurozone producer price index data for February. And then we cross over the Atlantic at 12.30 GMT uh, for durable goods orders, both X and inclusive of transportation for the month of February. A chance to look at, at how uh, US industry and business is uh, reinvesting and spending money on CapEx or not, as the case may be. At 12.55, we'll have the Red Book Index data for the week of March 29th. That's a look at how uh, US chain stores are performing across the country. And then at 13.45, it's the release of the ISM New York Business Conditions Index for March. At 19.30, uh, a chance to look at how uh, the US auto industry is performing with uh, total vehicle sales data for the month of March released there. And then at 20.30, uh, we get the private sector API weekly crude oil stocks for the week of March 25th and direct to round off proceedings at 2130 we'll have the AIG if I can even say that performance of services uh, index data out of Australia for the month, month of March and then at 2301 the British retail consortium shop price index data for the month of March as well. OK then, breaking news and comments caught my eye overnight. And first of all, the Reserve Bank of Australia kept rates on hold at 1.5% at its April meeting. However, the bank lowered its inflation outlook and dropped any reference uh, to 3% GDP growth in the country in its statement. That's all being taken uh, as further signs of dovishness from the RBA. Uh, and the, as we saw, both the Australian and New Zealand currencies sold off on the back of that. Meanwhile, UK MPs have failed to agree on any Brexit alternatives in yesterday's indicative voting. PM Theresa May will now hold a cabinet meeting to try and find a way forward ahead of the April 12th deadline. South Korean inflation has slowed to a 31-month low of just plus 0.4%. The data comes uh, just a day after weak manufacturing PMIs and could point to falling demand in the country. So South Korea uh, on that watch list now of slowing economies and one to keep a close eye on, I suspect, there. Perhaps, uh, perhaps it could act as something of a canary in a coal mine uh, for the rest of uh, South and Southeast Asia.
Meanwhile, US 10-year government bond yields have bounced away uh, from their recent lows in one of the biggest jumps seen since January. So um, an, a, a welcome bounce in the yields uh, there, but as we'll see in a moment, uh, that may not be the full story. OK, food for thought then, something to take away with you into the trading day and beyond. And why not think about this? As we've just seen, US bond yields rallied yesterday, yet globally the value of negative yielding bonds has been rising once more, testing to and through the $10 trillion mark. That means that investors and money managers are effectively paying bond issuers to borrow money and they are sacrificing their own income as they do so. And as we can see in the chart here, uh, courtesy of Barclays and Bloomberg, the, uh, the value of outstanding uh, and negative yielding uh, bonds globally has been rising. Uh, we're still off uh, well below, in fact, the lows that we saw in uh, mid-2015, and yet uh, we have seen a continuous rise, an almost continuous rise at least, uh, over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. So uh, what that says to us is that investors, in some quarters at least, are more concerned about uh, parking their money and getting it back uh, than they are uh, about getting a return on that money while it's uh, invested and that suggests that uh, that's risk off behavior and uh, and highlights uh, a good degree of caution if not outright fear from certain sections of the market about what the uh, future for global growth etc looks like okay it's risk warning time please do take a moment to read this risk warning trading cfds and foreign exchange on margin can be a risky business if you're in any doubt about those risks or the suitability of leverage products for you then please do take the time to contact your pepperstone account representative and as i say do read this risk warning thoroughly thank you very much for your time today